Hello everyone and welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can combine Photoshop and Divi to achieve compelling looking layouts. So this is the final design that we are aiming to achieve in today's tutorial. So as you can see, it may look basic, but there was quite a bit of uh, steps that were done in Photoshop. So I'll be showing you how I managed to blend these two images in Photoshop and also how to get this color uh, that really looks cool here in Photoshop. And then after all that work is done in Photoshop, I'm going to come back into Divi and then add this image into Divi. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let me show you how I managed to achieve this image in Photoshop. Okay, so the first thing here is to set your canvas uh, size and my size here is 2000 by 900 pixels. Now this may vary depending on what sort of website um, you're designing or the size of the actual width of your website. So I just went with 2000 by 900. Okay, so now that we have this in place, the next thing you want to do is to drag your images from either pixels or even from your um, camera on to this canvas. So I've already done that and these are my two images. So I've got this image of this man here and this image of this BMW interior. Right, so now that I have these two images, how do we blend these in such a way that it looks very professional? So to do that, you need to make sure that you have selected your top layer over here and then you want to come down over here to the bottom and select this layer mask right here so that adds a layer mask so what we can do next here is to now start painting using our brush so I'm gonna select my brush tool and you can see here this is my brush now you want to make sure that the size of the brush is quite big because if it's too small it won't make a good uh, selection so now I'm gonna start painting and you can see as as soon as I start painting it's now revealing my image here on the top okay so you can do just do that now here's the thing if you make a mistake you can always come over here and switch these colors the foreground and the background so I'm gonna switch that now and then if I start painting again you can see that that has come back now this is the power of using layer masks okay so let me just undo that okay so let's say you're happy with how these two images blend the next thing now is to just make sure that these colors have the same color temperature. Now, sometimes these images you use obviously may be taken uh, on different locations. So in those cases, you're going to have maybe an image which has a warmer look to it and the other one may have a slightly cooler look to it. So in order for you to have this in a uniform way is to make the image black and white. So let's go ahead and do that. So over here, right at the bottom, we have this adjustment layer uh, button. So I'm going to click once on it, and then it's going to reveal all this. So the only one that we're going to choose here is the black and white. So I'm going to select black and white. So as soon as I've done that, you can see my image now has been turned to black and white. So the whole image now has the same sort of uh, color to it, which is black and white. Now, it's time to add a brand new layer. I'm going to click on this little icon here to add our brand new layer. The next thing now is to just add a color to this black and white. So let's choose a color by coming over here to our foreground color. So the color I'm going to choose here is blue, but you can choose any color. So let's, let's start with something totally different here. So let's go ahead with this red, okay? So if I fill my, my layer with the red and I reduce the opacity, we can see here that we have this color to our image and that looks really cool. But in my example here, I need to use blue. So I'm going to undo this and then I'm going to come over here and select blue because that's what works with the type of design I'm working with. So I'm going to click OK and then making sure that this layer is selected, I am going to fill that layer with my foreground color. So to do that, I'm going to hold down the Alt and Backspace like that. Now my layer has been filled. The next thing I need to do now is to play around here with my blending modes. So I can choose maybe multiply. Let's see how that looks. So that's not too bad. Now we can lower the opacity just to decrease the intensity of that uh, color. So here there's several options we can use. We can even use color burn if we wanted to. But of course this doesn't look really nice. So I would um, 
suggest that you go in and play around with these different, uh, different ones and see which one works. In fact, this one lo really looks nice. I mean, you could actually go with this if you wanted, but you know what? For the sake of time, I'm just to go, I'm just gonna go back to this one right here, which is multiply. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep that one. Next, I'm going to add a brand new layer. So I'm gonna click, come over here to the bottom, click this layer icon. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to drag a gradient. So I'm gonna come over here to my gradient tool and then I'm just going to add my gradient like that. Now you can see here that the color that I've used here is on top of my background. So I'm just gonna drag this layer below this, this layer that we have, which is solid. And again, the way this is looking with this color, it doesn't look really nice. So what we're going to do is we are going to undo this and use black instead. So I'm going to come over here and change my foreground color to black like that. So our gradient now I think looks better if it's black. So now I'm gonna drag it one more time. Okay, so that looks, that look, that's looking much better. I can reduce the, um, the opacity a little bit if it's a bit too harsh, like that. But you know what? You can actually go into Divi and make this gradient in Divi, but I'm just making things easier for myself and reduce the amount of steps that I need to do when it comes to putting my site together. Okay, so now that I'm happy with this, all I have to do now is to save uh, this image. So I'm going to uh, save it. Now here's the thing, you need to make sure that when you save this image, it's, op it's optimized. So make sure over here on the top, it's the quality is set to about 80%. It doesn't need to be 100%. That just reduces the file size. So you can see here that the file size is quite small, which is great. And then just double check and make sure that your image canvas size here is again set to the right width and height. So once you're happy with that, go ahead and save it and then save it to your computer, wherever fo uh, whatever folder that you need. Okay, so now that I've got that, I can save that. But in my case, I've already saved this. So I'm just going to click on done. So we're done with Photoshop. The next thing we want to do now is to go into Divi and uh, start designing our page. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is to come over here to pages, click on add new. And then I'm just going to call this car landing page. Click on use the Divi Builder. And then I'm going to go straight into my visual builder. Right, so what I need to do next is to add my section. So I'm going to click this plus button here, click on full width, and then I'm going to go with full width header. Now I can start by adding my title. So I'm just going to use some dummy text from here to add my title. I'm going to paste my title in here. Subheading text. Again, I'm going to use the text here from Lorem 2, paste my subheading text. In fact, we might need to add a bit more to that to make it look like more of a description. So I'm gonna copy it, come back over here, and then just paste it like that. Okay, so that, that's looking much better. Now here on the button text one, I'm just gonna type learn more like that. Okay, so that's looking great. The next thing I want to do is to add our background image. So I'm going to come over here to background and then I'm going to choose my this third tab. Click this plus button here and my image is right here in my media library. In your case, you'd need to navigate to the folder where you downloaded your, uh, your image from Photoshop. So I'm going to select my image, click on upload an image. Right, so you can see here there's a bit of work that needs to be done. So I'm going to come over here to design, click on layout and make sure that this is set to full screen. So this now covers the full screen, which is what exactly what we need. Next, we are going to come over here to our logo and text orientation and center it. So now everything's all nice and centered. Now it's time to make sure we make some adjustments to our text and make it easier to read on this background. So I'm gonna come over here to my title text. In fact, I need to go to my text and change that text to light. Okay, so that turns it into white. And then now I can go into my title text and make further adjustments. So I'm gonna make this all caps. And the size, I can increase that a little bit, I think. 
All right, so I'll leave it at 48. And then I'm also going to add my line height. Let's say 1.4. So that's looking okay. And then I am going to um, go over here to my description text, my subhead text. And again, I'm going to increase the size of this. And then I'm going to add some line height. Right. So I can see here that that's a bit too much. So I'm going to reduce that to about, say, 20. And also the title here, this seems to be like there's a lot more text in the title. So you can always go ahead and adjust that by coming back over here to text. And let's just remove some of this. Okay, so that's looking much better now. Right, so I'm going to go back to design and then we're going to go into button one and click on use styles for button one. We can reduce the size or even increase the size of the button if we wanted to. So I'm just going to make sure this is set to 20. And then for the button color, I'm going to make sure that this button is set to white. You know, the text color set to black. And then the button background color needs to be set to white. I'm going to add my color here like that. So now it's white. But of course, you can change this color to whatever you want. Next, I'm going to make sure that I have some letter spacing to this button to make it look much better. And we can either choose to have the animation or not. So right now, I'm just going to leave the animation as it is. That's fine. I'm going to go ahead now and save. Great. So here we have this uh, section here on the top. We need to make sure that this is on the bottom. But let's add a bit more uh, information into this section. So I'm going to come over here, click a single column, add my text. Um, in fact, I need the text module. Select it. And then over here, we're going to add some text into that. So I'm just going to copy a bunch of text like that from Lorem 2. And then I'm going to paste my text in the content area like that. Now we are going to need a title for this. So I'm going to use this as my title. But for this to work, it needs to be on its own line. So just make sure that when you add titles, the title is in its own line. So let me just go ahead and copy that title one more time and then I'm going to paste it on its own line like that and then you need to highlight it and make sure you assign heading one to it like that right so now we have the opportunity to now make further adjustments to this so I'm going to click on design heading text change the um, alignment to centered we're going to increase the size a bit like that so that's looking great and then I'm going to come over here to text and then make sure my text orientation is also centered. Increase the size from 16 to about, um, let's say, 18. And then over here on the line height, I'm just going to increase that to make it easier to read. So that's looking great. I'm going to go ahead now and save. And then all I have to do now is to drag this section to the bottom. Just like that. Let go. And then what I may want to do here is to increase my padding to about 210 now it may sound it may seem like it's a lot but that's because we need to add our design to the section so let's go ahead and do that so I'm gonna come over here to my section settings click on design and then I'm gonna come over here to dividers click on top so my divider that I'm going to choose here is let's try this one here okay so that's looking really nice so now you can see that the size that I created here leaves enough space for this to be laid out neatly. Okay, so now I can go ahead and save. So as you can see now, this is the design of our page and that's looking really nice already. So you can go ahead now and add more sections here and add more content. So maybe you might want to have some videos, some testimonials, companies you've worked with, depending on you know, what site you're designing. So, so far, this is looking great. All I have to do now is to just save my page and exit the Visual Builder. Okay, so this is done. So that's our design. So you can see that we've uh, spent time in Photoshop, created our image, and now we've brought it into 
into Divi. So that's how you combine Photoshop and Divi. Now, I have a course coming out soon, so just keep an eye on that by subscribing to my uh, website, which is wpusertv.com. So you'll be notified when this course comes out where I get to show you a lot more about what you can do with Photoshop, how to optimize your images and all that great stuff. Because all these websites you see out there, definitely almost 100%, they use Photoshop or some sort of image manipulation program to make their images stand out and also to optimize them. Okay, and also if you're brand new to, um, to uh, the world of WordPress, I have a free course that I'm giving away called WordPress Mastery. You can go ahead and sign up for that course. It's absolutely free. So you can go ahead and do that. And also, if you'd like to learn more about Divi, you can um, go to my link, which is in the show notes again below. And then you can you know, sign up. There's actually a discount on that course as we speak. Okay, so that's all I have for you in this video. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.